Hello and happy Halloween. I have been sent from the NAEW committee. You all can call me the executive. At NAEW second in command we seen Joe Omega, Norm Daly, and TJ Nicholson attack Mason Chronic and ruin the main event of the show. At NAEW three's not enough we will see a six man battle royal over the top rope with the winner facing Mason Chronic and that match's winner will be in the main event for the NAEW championship in the four way elimination. The Crusade Joe Omega and Norm Daly will be allowed to compete in the tag tournament but not the battle royal as punishment for the attack. Hello everyone and welcome to Haunted Underground, a special here by NAEW, this is your host Danny Jackpot. We got a six man battle roll for the NAEW Frenzy Fiesta Championship with Marcus Matrix defending against Hugo Sullivan, the suspect making his NAEW debut, bonkers. We also got in this match Brandon Shields and Butch Simpson. Thank you everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go off my top of my head right there. Remember who was all in this match? Also tonight we're gonna have Johnny D, the Monster Hunter, taking on the a man he calls a monster himself, Shane Corson. And in the main event we're gonna have a, a, a feud of ten years brought back as Biff and Dreas and Shawn and Dynasty will face each other in the main event here on Haunted Underground. As Marcus Matrix makes his way down to the ring right now to defend his frenzy Fiesta Championship. Everyone, I don't know if you heard what the executive said, but the executive here from the board has decided that the Crusade will not will not get a chance to compete in a six-man battle royal at NAW3. That Matt, the winner of that six-man battle royal will then go on to take on Mason Chronic in that same show. And then in that same show, the winner of that match, the winner of the battle royal, Mason Chronic, will be in the NAW four-way elimination championship match at the end of the show. What a what a what a what an event in AEW three is looking to be as Butch Simpson makes his way down to the ring. Butch Simpson along with Mike Ballander had qualified for the tag team had qualified for the next round in the tag team tournament. This Halloween special the uh, in the year of 2019 the the. Nationals have just won the World Series last night. Would like to congratulate Washington Nationals on a World Series win. As Bush Simpson's in the ring right now, getting ready for the six man battle royal. On this Haunted Underground special. I'd also like to say congrats. Happy birthday to Biff Andreas, who just had a birthday a few days ago. And I'd also like to say happy birthday to my dad today. It's also his birthday. As Brandon Shields makes his way down to the ring. Brandon Shield, a member of the fraternity, did not get a chance to tag in, tag in last night. Or last time we seen him here on Underground. But Brandon Shields and Jason James, part of the fraternity, have moved on in the tag team, the United States Tag Team Title Tournament. We'll see on the next Underground more, more tag team tournament matches. But this is a haunted Underground special. As Bonkers makes his way down to the ring now. Bonkers in the ring, or Bonkers making his way down to the ring now. Bonkers was, was one of the men, one of the teams who lost last underground. I just want to say, poor Mason Chronic got his opportunity robbed on NAW one by the Crusade, or NAW two second in command by the Crusade. That was a heinous attack I seen by the Crusade, and I'm glad they're not going to be in that six-man tag team match. Or, or Norman Joe Omega will not get the chance to compete in that six man battle royal because they, they deserve to have lost their chance. Here on this Haunted Underground, this is a spooky edition here in NAEW. One of these six men will have a chance to walk away with the NAEW Mexican Frenzy Fiesta Championship. As we have yet to see the suspect make his way down to the ring, a man who's making his NAEW debut tonight. The suspect, a legend here in CAW, member of the famous Damage Gauge stable. Him and him and Homer, Matt Icorn, commentator for WEDF, both also compete for WEDF. 
As we see the man who Marcus Matrix sent you a table on NAW 2, Hugo Sullivan. Hugo Sullivan on NAW 1, though. We got five eliminations in that battle royal. Hugo Sullivan once again getting a second chance at this frenzy Fiesta Championship. Don't forget the, the rules of the Frenzy Fiesta Championship. If you can defend the championship three times, you, you can cash it in right then and there for, well, not right then and there, but you can cash that in for, for a shot at the NAEW Maple Leaf Championship. Then we will be seeing Johnny D and Al Cabrera face each other at four. At three, three is not enough. We'll also, if you get five defenses in it, then you can cash in for a world championship shot, NAEW championship shot. Both those belts will find homes and and the first ever winners of those belts will happen at NAW3. Three is not enough. As Hugo Sullivan in the ring now. And we all know who this is going to be. Last but not least, making his NAW debut. It's going to be the suspect. The suspect as CAW legend. Former WDF United States Champion is a suspect. Former WDF Tag Team Champion in, the, in that Million Dollar Corporation stable. The suspect pays Lou to that with the, with the Million Dollar lower at the cash logo on his tights. Suspect one of my good friends here in CAEW. CAEW, sorry not CAEW. One of my good friends in CAEW and NAEW. As this six man is Battle Royal is underway. We got Hugo Sullivan and Brandon Shields working on each other. The suspect and, and Butch Simpson. We got Bonkers and Marcus Matrix. And Bonkers will quickly eliminate Marcus Matrix. We're going to have a new frenzy VS the champion. What? Marcus Matrix eliminated. We're going to have a new champion. One of these five guys are going to be the new Frenzy Fiesta champion. That's what makes this belt just so shocking that something like that can happen. Marcus Matrix has lost in the first few seconds of this battle royal. And Bonkers is the one who tosses him out. That's bonkers. <laughs> That's bonkers. <laughs> we got an airplane spin and then throwing him down. Hugo Sullivan did on Brandon Shields. And the suspect being able to hold on with Butch Simpson able to, we're trying, to throw, we're trying to throw him over the top rope. Still, I can't believe Marcus Matrix quickly eliminated in this battle royal. This battle royal for the, for the once again for the Frenzy Fiesta Championship on this Haunted Underground special. These five men. Uh, one of the, whoever wins this match is going to be a new champion as Hugo throws off the call legend Marcus Matrix. What? Those would be the two guys I would expect would be the favorites to win this. Would be Marcus Matrix and the suspect. One of these four guys are going to be the new champion as a suspect. This was his debut match. I would have guessed a little bit more from the suspect. But a battle royal is a battle royal. You never know what's going to happen. Any of these guys can be tossed out, thrown over the top rope at any time. Like right there, Bonkers is in trouble with Brandon Shields. And Brandon Shields is able to get rid of Bonkers. One of these three teams now, one of these three guys are now going to be. The Frenzy Fiesta champion, we got Butch, Simpson, Brand Shields, and Hugo Sullivan. Brand Shields trying to throw out Hugo right now. I'm surprised Butch is not helping him. Can't believe that announcement the committee made. A six-man battle royal at three is not enough. Just like this one right here. But the winner of that one will move on for the World Championship. I can only imagine what six stars will get a chance to compete in that battle royal. At NAW3, not enough. Three is not enough.
These speaking of three is not enough. Three kid, three still in this match, and three won't be enough for a winner. You can only have one for a winner, and one of these guys are gonna walk away with this championship belt. Championship title. Getting yelled at in my headset. <laughs> Hugo. Thought he was gonna try to throw a butcher over no, but he hits a giant sidewalk slam by a guy like Hugo's size. That's always gonna have some impact. More impact than a regular guy. Hit a sidewalk slam on you. Anything Hugo does, he makes regular moves look devastating. As a running STO on Brandon Shields. Which one of these three guys you gotta imagine? If I was Brandon Shields, Brandon Shields is not a small guy himself, trying to work over Hugo now, but he's not nothing like Hugo's size and strength. If I was Brandon Shields and Butch Simpson, I'd be working on drawing out Hugo. I, I, I would have fought form an alliance and draw out Hugo and make it between those two if I was those if I were those guys. But instead of Hugo now working on Brandon then we got Hugo and Butch Simpson working on Brandon Shields. Well, like I said, Brandon Shields is no small guy himself, and neither is Butch. Brand Shields out of this match. Butch Simpson, Hugo Sullivan, one of these two guys going to be the next Frenzy Fiesta champion. There's a big backbreaker by Butch on Hugo Sullivan. Happy Halloween, everybody. Again, one of these two guys are going to be trick or treat for one, a trick for one, and a treat for the other. As one of these guys is going to be tricked over this top rope, one of these guys is going to be treated with the, the fr Frenzy Fiesta champion as Hugo's in trouble. Hugo getting tossed over the top rope, but laying on his feet, able to work his way back in the ring there. Hugo Sullivan's got a headlock on Butch, whipping him into the whipping him into the far corner from the ring that Butch was in, and Hugo with a huge clothesline takes Butch over the top rope. Hugo Sullivan's gonna be your new Marcus, and your new Frenzy Fiesta champion. Marcus Matrix only lasted, what, two seconds in this match, I would say. The champion was quickly thrown out. Hugo Sullivan, he, he's been looking for the championship. He's been in every Frenzy Fiesta title match yet, and now he's Frenzy Fiesta champion. Can he, Hugo's going to be a tough guy to beat for this title. In, in multi-man matches, he's always going to be a big threat no matter what, because he's a big guy. Well, that's just one of three matches as Hugo celebrates the championship. Hugo throws over, but tosses out Butch Simpson in the final parts of this match. And Hugo wins the Frenzy Fiesta Championship in the first match of this Haunted Underground Halloween Special. Alright guys, we have to move on to an Extreme Rules match. We're going to see the Silver Apostle Shane Corson, leader of the Dark Carnival. Take on the man who's going to take on Al Cabrera at any AEW 3 is not enough in the 20 minute Iron Man match for the Maple Leaf Championship, Johnny D. Monster Hunter Johnny D, by the way. As Shane Corson with that, with that scary like entrance, he doesn't make the, th this man celebrates Halloween year round. This man, this isn't no costume, he dresses like this normally. This is this is how he acts. This is this is Shane Carson at Shane Carson's fullest right here. Maybe maybe even a little bit fuller because it's Halloween night, night of the dead. Shane Carson can pull off one heck of a victory here, and maybe that can move him into this Maple Leaf Championship match. Maybe a triple threat, 20 minute Iron Man match. If Shane Carson can win this, you know why? Because he would have one heck of a point to make. Shane Corson spin like liquid substance out. I don't know what that is. That red substance that he spits. I don't want to know what it is. Shane Corson, though, the silver apostle. I've known this guy for a long time, and he is not the man he used to be ever since that coma. As here comes Johnny D with Chainsaw and all. Johnny D, yes! I love Johnny D. He's a monster hunter. He's gonna hunt. The, he's gonna hunt down this monster right here. He's, he he's always had it up for the Dark Carnival. He said he believes they're all just a giant monster, bunch of monsters, bunch of monsters. He said, Johnny D, look at this Halloween night. He's got the chainsaw, looking to hunt another monster in this Extreme Rules Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Shane Corson, Johnny D. As Johnny D makes his way out to the ring right now, he's in the ring. 
Put that chain. Oh, get everyone, get out of this way. That chainsaw is running. Johnny D does not give a care when it comes to honey monsters. I'll tell you that right now. And we got this. We got this extreme rules falls count anywhere. No disqualification. No holds bar match. I, yes, yes. I threw every single this stipulation that all means the same in there. It's a street fight, also, everybody. It's a it's a Halloween night street fight. Oh wait a second! Halloween night street fight. I like that. That's what that. That's what this match is gonna be uploaded as. Everyone, welcome to the Halloween night street fight between Johnny D and Shane Corson. Oh, back to the match. Johnny D and Shane Corson locked up dead even so far in this match. I'd say Johnny D has a lot more to lose in this match than Shane Corson because he has to go on. He has he has that momentum that he doesn't want to lose out on from winning that fatal four way. At NAW uh, second in command. Johnny D was attacked by Andrew Leanna and Steven Raiden after that match, don't forget. I'm sure he'd like to get some revenge on those two at one point down the line. Steven Raiden and Andrew Leanna, the tag team of them, they're going to be in the tournament. <laughs> These two guys weren't even a tag team last week, and now they're in the tournament. These guys are one of the greatest tag teams I've ever seen compete in CAW. C CAW, they have a lot. They have a bunch of title reigns, a bunch of championships run. The uh, and new and new AW, they have three belts. And and uh, in AEW, they had a championship run. In new AW, they had three championship runs. They've won belts anywhere they go. Uh, one of the most decorated tag teams in CAW is Steven Ray and Andrew Leanna. So to see those two together, uh, it excites me, but it frightens me. And Johnny do the snapmare on Shane Corson, kicking him in the face. Johnny do with the cover on Shane Corson, but not getting getting nowhere with that cover. This match now getting Joe John, Johnny D picking up momentum, I would say, in this match, because this match has been a little bit more to all Johnny D right now. Another drop kick, three drop kicks, some punches, knocking Shane Corson down. Is Johnny D looking to be the first one to go grab a weapon, it looks like? With Shane Corson stopping him, and then Johnny D. Shane Corson went for a weapon, and Johnny C stopped him. Johnny D going for some kind of move there, but Shane Corson was able to fight him off. And then Johnny D able to fight Shane Corson off. Take a little tip for tap between these two right now. Don't forget, falls count anywhere. That's why the referee's not counting out. That's why the referee's in the outside following these two guys. As Shane Corson looks like he's even the first one to successfully grab a weapon, I think. But what's he searching for? A bat. Shane Corson's got a bat, but Johnny D able to grab the bat from him right away. Nailing Corson right in the head with that bat. And then again in the back. Again in the back. And again in the back by Johnny D. Johnny D is now hunting down this monster, as, you'd as he would like to tell you right now. And a big belly to belly again now. Attacking the back of Shane Corson. Get a one count there only. Surprise, Shane Corson not kicking out at one. Then you see more one counts in this league than any other league. In AEW, one count only. <laughs> and a huge spine buster by Johnny D. One, two, and Johnny D only in a two count with that spine buster. That poke him in the lid, poke him in the eyes, and. Oh, we see him win the match with that at AEW 2. That low blow by Johnny D. <laughs> and, a, and, a, and, a, and a Halloween night street fight. Anything goes. Johnny D just picks up the win on Shane Corson. Johnny D. You could say monster hunting and Shane Corson is just. This match was almost all Johnny D. Let's not forget, Johnny D was able to nail Shane Corson a few times with a baseball bat. That we can any man. <laughs> or any apostle, I guess you could say. As Shane Corson calls himself. That spine buster, that belly, that, that belly to back suplex, the low blow. <laughs> Shane Corson was out done and was out and about. Well, once the match got to the outside of the ring, it was Johnny D's match. It was it was almost his whole it was almost his playground. Johnny D picking up momentum. Three's not enough. Johnny D Al Cabrera. Canadian Maple Leaf Championship match, 20 minute Iron Man match. Even though this match might have been quick, he's gonna have to go 20 minutes without Cabrera. Most falls. Whoever gets the most, whoever gets the most wins, you should say the most, the most decisive finishes, will get the Maple Leaf Championship. 
But tonight, Johnny D has something to celebrate as he once again says he once again knocked down the hunter. That is. The, the, the monster that is. Shane Corson, he believes. <laughs> as he believes. <laughs> and now we're going to have the legendary feud that never ends. Sean Dynasty, Biff Andreas. And Sean Dynasty, the astronaut Sean Dynasty here. Full costume and all here on Haunted Underground Night. Even though he wears his costume every single time he comes on the ring. The astronaut Sean Dynasty. Sean Dynasty and Biff Andreas. Going back to another league that these two guys were in, and when they competed in NAW, these guys won the New WWE Unified Tag Team Championship. So these guys, former tag team partners, the uh, NAW history again, ACWL, the Team ACWL. These guys are members. Biff Andreas defeated Sean Dynasty for the ACWL Championship, and imagine those two guys had planned the finish out to. They even admitted it that they planned the finish out to it. Being in revealing themselves to the ACWL members. And the King of the Jungle is here! It's Biff Andreas! He's wearing his King of the Jungle costume! It's Biff! The King of the Jungle! Biff is here! Biff is here! King of the Jungle! I'm sorry! I'm marking out! Biff's gotta win! Biff's gotta win! He's wearing King of the Jungle! It's Biff! It's say he I'm sorry, Sean! Biff Andreas! His the fans are going nuts! It's King of the Jungle, Biff, guys! He is king of the jungle tonight. He is it's a kind of underground. And Biff and Dre has decided to let loose a little bit. And he's wearing his king of the jungle costume. Oh, it's Biff and Dre, it's the king of the jungle. Sean Dynasty even laughing a little bit at this. I don't think Sean should be laughing though. Because this is a very serious match. Biff and Dre is Sean Dynasty. The feud that continues no matter what Biff and Dre is, is wearing. Oh no, God, Biff. Biff. Biff, we're in King of the Jungle gear. I absolutely love it. Oh. This match about to start between these two great athletes. As Biff's still wearing the gorilla suit, nailing a huge spine buster. Sean Dynasty takes off the astronaut helmet for the match like he normally would. Biff unfortunately had to take off, take off his crown. And Biff and Dre is totally taking to Sean Dynasty right here. Two big moves, two big impact moves start for the match. That sleeper slam, a spine buster. Sean going to have to recover here, trying to, Biff, trying to make some separation between him and Biff and tossing Biff out of the ring. That's smart. Now Biff, you now Sean can work his match. Sean's more of an outside of the ring guy. Sean Dynasty is taking Biff's head and ringing it against the, right against that table right there. And, this, and the referee had a five count now. Biff throwing Sean back in the ring and now working himself back in the ring at a six. King of the Jungle, Biff. Halloween night. You gotta love it. You should have been handing out candy. I would have loved it even more. Who's going to win? The King of the Jungle Biff for the Astronaut Sean Dynasty. Only one of these guys can pick up a win here tonight. And this feud that... Well, this, this is going to be the final chapter in their feud, finally. And maybe it comes down to this between those, these two guys. That, that, that they can wrestle each other in an astronaut suit. And maybe a, and a gorilla suit. And maybe that hatred isn't as much as it used to be. And... These two guys are they, they, they don't forget they used to be they've been friends multiple times throughout the years. As Sean Dynasty now taking Biff Andreas to the mat. Big knee to the back of Biff's head there. Biff Andreas 0-2 in AEW. Sean Dynasty has only had one match. Was that about yeah, one match was only that battle oh two matches, also being the table matchup. But uh didn't he came up short there also. Not really ever getting pinned with Sean Dynasty in, or ever, so but Sean has an 0-2 record also, you could say. What about Hugo Sullivan winning, winning the Frenzy Fiesta Championship earlier tonight? As we see a, a spine buster to the outside of the ring on Sean Dynasty by Biff Andreas. And that's the second one I will see in two matches. That spine buster to the outside of the ring doing damage to people's backs tonight, that ring. Haunted Underground Special. 
Breaking backs. Making snacks. And Sean Dynasty catching Biff and Jerry's like a huge neck breaker there. Don't forget Biff and Jerry celebrating a birthday the other day. Biff Andreas, happy birthday once again. Getting a one count there on Biff. Biff's a, Biff's a hard guy to beat. Well, he's wearing a gorilla suit. I think Biff should have took that off of the match. Like, it was fun to see him in it, but but he's still wrestling a match, and this has got to be serious here. And, oh, Sean Dynasty with a huge GDT on the ring apron. The ring apron, the hardest part of the, of the, of the whole ring. Other than the ring post. <laughs> Other than the ring post. <laughs> I can't believe that Biff Andreas... Oh, the referee might have only been at a one, but that was he was down for a few seconds and bit pissed. Biff, Biff's ticked here. He he just he just whipped Sean at the stairs. These guys now, like I said, this is a feud between these two and and Biff now. And now he's spine busted to the outside of the ring. They don't need that. Neither of these guys want to lose this match, no matter what they're wearing. None of these guys want to go zero and three in AEW. Two, don't forget that win record does matter. Don't explain, doesn't explain how Bonkers made it into that championship match earlier. I think it's just because it's Halloween, by the way. <laughs> that whole win record matters thing. Oh. And uh, John Dice has been taking the Biff in this match. As much as Biff, these guys have been taking it to each other. It's been a heck of a match. It's been a heck of a show on Haunted Special. It's Haunted Underground Special. Biff and Jarius throwing Sean Dynasty. I mean, Sean Dynasty throwing Biff and Jarius in the ring now. And maybe Sean was thinking about grabbing those stairs, but I don't know. These guys playing a little loop de loop with each other in the end of the ring. These two call veterans both started in the same place. These Both these men, I believe, started in the same battle royal. And Sean only in a one count on Biff. Biff behind Sean Dynasty. Looking to nail the wave of the future. <laughs> the king of the jungle. The banana slip. Two, three, and Biff and Dreyas defeat Sean Dynasty here tonight on the Haunted Underground special. Oh, what a, what, what a special tonight was, guys. I will say what a special tonight was. Biff and Dreyas defeat Sean Dynasty in the main event. The next show is going to be another underground, a regular underground. Then we're going to see where three is not enough. NAEW has a lot of plans, and the Crusade can't ruin them. I'll tell you that. Biff Andreas, the king of the jungle. Biff Andreas, the the astronaut here tonight. Biff Andreas, Biff wins in the Halloween special. Happy birthday, Biff. Happy birthday, my dad. Good night from North American Elite Wrestling, and happy Halloween.